Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to the mysterious Titan, the moon of Saturn. In this video we're going to be talking about an amazing announcement coming from NASA that they have now confirmed the incredible mission to Titan that's going to start in 2026 and this time we're taking a very interesting helicopter-like drone there. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now, if you've been on the channel long enough, you know that Titan is literally my most favorite object in the solar system, except of course for our own planet Earth. And that's because it is actually very Earth-like in many different ways. It is most likely one of the most Earth-like objects out there in the solar system and would be one of the easiest to settle on and to colonize. And that's because, first of all, it has an actual atmosphere that's even thicker than the one here on Earth. In other words, here you don't have to worry about uh, pressure because there's quite a lot of it on the surface. And underneath all of this atmosphere, there is an actual liquid cycle with rain, with evaporation, with actual weather effects and all sorts of Earth-like conditions. The only problem, of course, is that it's kind of cold here. As a matter of fact, the average daily temperature on the surface of Titan is roughly around minus 180 degrees Celsius or minus 290 Fahrenheit. So yeah, it's chilly. Let's just say that you're not going to be able to walk around without some serious protection. But nevertheless though, it is one of the most exciting objects for us to explore because, first of all, we've already seen what the surface looks like. We've landed here with the Huygens probe from the Cassini mission, um, and back then we were able to take an actual footage, actual video of what the atmosphere looks like, what the actual surface looks like, and all of it really impressed the scientists. So for the longest time since then, we've been trying to get back here because this world looks absolutely incredible. So here is the footage from the Huygens mission and here you can actually see how all of this looks like in real life. These are actual photos taken by the mission. This is not a simulation. So this world is absolutely incredible, very, very intriguing, and most importantly has quite a lot of similar molecules to Earth. Uh, there's a lot of organic molecules here, there's a lot of methane and ethane and a lot of molecules that are normally needed for life to evolve. So in a sense, this world may represent what Earth may have been like billions and billions of years ago. And so here, let's watch the landing. Uh, this will be from two angles, from east and west. And you'll see that it is a very interesting and very unusual place. One major difference here between this object and Earth, though, is that there's just not enough sunlight. As a matter of fact, um, you get roughly around one one-hundredth of sunlight even during daylight. So this would be a very, very dark place. It would not really be a good place for us to bring any kind of solar panels. Anyway, so here we go, the second uh, part of the landing where you get to see what it looks like from the other side. Now, it might look a little bit unrealistic, but this is because the camera used here were meant for uh, dark exposure as well. So it's not really accurate in terms of color. But anyway, so there is that bounce and the slide. You get to see the little rocks that are literally made out of um, water, but this is much harder than typical ice. And you're about to also see the parachute shadow right there. If you'd like to see the whole thing though, I did make a video about this a few years ago so you can check it out somewhere above my head. So, it obviously was quite a huge surprise for a lot of space enthusiasts and for myself as well that NASA announced their fourth New Frontiers mission. This mission is going to be this beautiful drone-like helicopter device that's going to be sent to Titan to explore the surface to look for life and to try to discover the mysteries of this object um, completely by itself, autonomously, in approximately seven years from when I'm making this video. Although the actual landing is not going to happen until 2034, because it does take a while to get to Saturn. And as I said, this is the fourth mission uh, of the New Frontiers NASA program, the other three being New Horizons, that was responsible for taking photos of Pluto and for recently visiting the object known as Ultima Thule, 
The Juno mission that's currently exploring Jupiter and its moons and is taking some incredible photos around Jupiter and is also the record holder for the farthest mission to use solar panels. As you can see, there are three very large solar panels here, making this a very interesting mission. And lastly, the OSIRIS-REx mission that's currently trying to analyze the asteroid known as Bennu and is eventually going to retrieve a sample of this asteroid and return it back to Earth. And so this one here is the fourth and probably the most advanced and most complex mission NASA has yet to plan. Here we have a very interesting um, kind of a drone-like device. Technically, it's a helicopter or octocopter because it has eight different blades. Each blade is going to be roughly around three feet or about one meter large. And overall, this device is going to be um, size of a small car, roughly around 450 kilograms in mass or approximately 1,000 pounds. It is definitely going to be one of the most complex landings and one of the most complex autonomous uh, drones out there that has ever been created. Now, the interesting thing to notice here is that it is actually going to be technically a quadrocopter, but it has two blades here for, well, really for emergencies. In case one of them fails, it can still easily fly with just one of these blades being active. And um, the way that it's designed and the way that the atmosphere of Titan is in general, it's going to be able to fly here very easily without any challenges. Due to very low surface gravity, along with really high pressure, uh, technically it's going to be about 40 times as efficient at flying as it would be on Earth. So in that sense, it's not really something that's impossible. As a matter of fact, um, this is not even the first proposed flying mission to Titan. Back in the days, two other flying missions were uh, proposed and unfortunately rejected. One of them was based on a kind of a balloon that would just float around the atmosphere of Titan and would use a sensor right here to explore the surface. The other one was an actual miniature airplane with a kind of a propeller in the back that would do pretty much the same and unfortunately both of these missions were eventually rejected, but not this one. And this mission is now officially known as the Dragonfly and is definitely going to be funded and launched in 2026. Now, what exactly is Dragonfly going to study on Titan? And well, not a lot, but there are four major components here. One of them is going to be a device that's going to study weather effects and also um, earthquakes or technically Titan quakes. The other device is going to study um, atmospheric composition. There's going to be a device that's going to study chemical composition from samples. And lastly, there are going to be really complex cameras to take photos and to try to provide an overall view of what we're looking at. But also there's going to be an antenna, of course, and that antenna is going to be used to communicate with Earth. However, because Titan is so far away, it's going to take approximately 43 minutes for signal to get back to us. So we can't just control this rover with a remote control. It has to be completely autonomous. And that's where the challenge begins because this beautiful device is going to have to do everything by itself. It has to land, it has to choose the correct area, it has to analyze any dangers or hazards, and it has to be able to decide for itself if it's safe or not to fly. It can only fly during daylight because it's not going to see anything at night, and the day here lasts for eight days. The night also lasts for eight days, so it has to just stay on the ground. And because there's nothing on Earth that can resemble Titan, other than, I guess, Antarctica in some sense, it has to be able to train itself using really complex machine learning algorithms and try to improve itself as it goes, because otherwise it's going to be a failure completely. All of the energy is going to be coming from here, and this is known as the RTG, which is a type of battery that uses the decay of plutonium that you see on the screen right here as the source of power. A lot of uh, previous missions use this as well, including, of course, the Curiosity mission that's on Mars right now. RTG is going to be responsible for recharging the batteries overnight for those eight days. And then during the day, the um, Dragonfly is going to be exploring the surface and can actually stay in the air up to four hours on a single charge. And at the same time, uh, it can fly up to about 12 kilometers or eight miles in a single go. So it's going to be able to explore the area nearby where it lands in a location known as the Shangri-La Dunes. 
It's this darker patch on the surface of Titan, very close to where the original Huygens landed as well. And one of the reasons uh, this location was chosen is because, first of all, it's kind of flat. But second of all, it's very close to one of the well-known craters here that we believe has uh, a high chance of having liquid water there, but also possibly some signs of life. Now, Titan is a very mysterious place for many reasons, but one of them is that there are these unusual cycles of methane that could not be explained. And as you know, here on Earth, methane is produced by life usually. So for a very long time now, scientists have been speculating that the beautiful object known as Titan may actually have very unusual life that has evolved to live on this very cold, but very beautiful moon. And because it's literally covered in very similar conditions to Earth other than the temperature, it would not really surprise anyone if we found life here pretty quickly. And so despite Titan being so cold and somewhat dark and unfriendly, it's still one of the best places for us to potentially discover extraterrestrial life. And this is exactly what this mission is for, and that is why it is probably one of the most exciting future missions coming out of NASA. Anyway, so that's kind of all we know about the Dragonfly so far. It's still in very early development, but it's definitely going to be happening within the next seven years or so. And as we develop this a little bit more and as we learn more about the mission, I'm going to do a follow-up and explain a little bit more about why it's important, but also what we might end up finding there on Titan. Now, I don't know if YouTube is still going to be a thing when this mission finally lands on Titan, but if it is, I'm definitely going to be making a video about it, although I'll probably be a lot older. I'll, I think I'll be in my 50s by then. And um, yeah, so expect the future Anton to explain to you what's going to happen here. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this particular video. And if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and wants to know more about the universe in general, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.